June 8th. Advice for old and young. Light is sweet. How pleasant to see a new day dawning. When people live to be very old, let them rejoice in every day of life. But let them also remember there will be many dark days. Everything still to come is meaningless. Young people, it's wonderful to be young. Enjoy every minute of it. Do everything you want to do. Take it all in. But remember that you must give an account to God for everything you do. So refuse to worry and keep your body healthy. But remember that youth with a whole life before you is meaningless. Don't let the excitement of youth cause you to forget your Creator. Honor Him in your youth before you grow old and say, Life is not pleasant anymore. Remember Him before the light of the sun, moon, and stars is dim to your old eyes and rain clouds continually darken your sky. Remember Him before your legs, the guards of your house, start to tremble, and before your shoulders, the strong man stoop. Remember Him before your teeth, your few remaining servants stop grinding, and before your eyes, the women looking through the windows, see dimly. Remember Him before the door to life's opportunities is closed and the sound of work fades. Now you rise at the first chirping of the birds, but then all their sounds will grow faint. Remember him before you become fearful of falling and worry about danger in the streets, before your hair turns white like an almond tree in bloom, and you drag along without energy like a dying grasshopper, and the caper berry no longer inspires sexual desire. Remember him before you near the grave, your everlasting home, when the mourners will weep at your funeral. Yes, remember your Creator now, while you are young, before the silver cord of life snaps and the golden bowl is broken. Don't wait until the water jar is smashed at the spring and the pulley is broken at the well, for then the dust will return to the earth and the Spirit will return to God who gave it. Everything is meaningless, says the teacher, completely meaningless. Concluding Thoughts Keep this in mind. The teacher was considered wise, and he taught the people everything he knew. He listened carefully to many proverbs, studying and classifying them. The teacher sought to find just the right words to express truths clearly. The words of the wise are like cattle prods, painful but helpful. Their collected sayings are like a nail-studded stick with which a shepherd drives the sheep. But my child... Let me give you some further advice. Be careful, for writing books is endless, and much study wears you out. That's the whole story. Here now is my final conclusion. Fear God and obey His commands, for this is everyone's duty. God will judge us for everything we do, including every secret thing, whether good or bad. The Northern Tribes Revolt Rehoboam went to Shechem, where all Israel had gathered to make him king. When Jeroboam, son of Nebat, heard of this, he returned from Egypt, for he had fled to Egypt to escape from King Solomon. The leaders of Israel summoned him, and Jeroboam and the whole assembly of Israel went to speak with Rehoboam. Your father was a hard master, they said. Lighten the harsh labor demands and heavy taxes that your father imposed on us. Then we will be your loyal subjects. Rehoboam replied, Give me three days to think this over, then come back for my answer. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam discussed the matter with the older men who had counseled his father Solomon. What is your advice? he asked. How should I answer these people? The older counselors replied, If you are willing to be a servant to these people today and give them a favorable answer, they will always be your loyal subjects. But Rehoboam rejected the advice of the older men and instead asked the opinion of the young men who had grown up with him and were now his advisors. What is your advice? he asked them. How should I answer these people who want me to lighten the burdens imposed by my father? The young men replied, This is what you should tell those complainers who want a lighter burden. My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. Yes, my father laid heavy burdens on you, but I'm going to make them even heavier. My father beat you with whips, but I will beat you with scorpions. Three days later, Jeroboam and all the people returned to hear Rehoboam's decision, just as the king had ordered. 
But Rehoboam spoke harshly to the people, for he rejected the advice of the older counselors and followed the counsel of his younger advisors. He told the people, My father laid heavy burdens on you, but I'm going to make them even heavier. My father beat you with whips, but I will beat you with scorpions. So the king paid no attention to the people. This turn of events was the will of the Lord, for it fulfilled the Lord's message to Jeroboam son of Nebat through the prophet Ahijah from Shiloh. When all Israel realized that the king had refused to listen to them, they responded, Down with the dynasty of David! We have no interest in the son of Jesse! Back to your homes, O Israel! Look out for your own house, O David! So the people of Israel returned home. But Rehoboam continued to rule over the Israelites who lived in the towns of Judah. King Rehoboam sent Adoniram, who was in charge of the labor force, to restore order. But the people of Israel stoned him to death. When this news reached King Rehoboam, he quickly jumped into his chariot and fled to Jerusalem. And to this day, the northern tribes of Israel have refused to be ruled by a descendant of David. When the people of Israel learned of Jeroboam's return from Egypt, they called an assembly and made him king over all Israel. So only the tribe of Judah remained loyal to the family of David. From Second Chronicles Rehoboam went to Shechem, where all Israel had gathered to make him king. When Jeroboam, son of Nebad, heard of this, he returned from Egypt, for he had fled to Egypt to escape from King Solomon. The leaders of Israel summoned him, and Jeroboam and all Israel went to speak with Rehoboam. Your father was a hard master, they said. Lighten the harsh labor demands and heavy taxes that your father imposed on us. Then we will be your loyal subjects. Rehoboam replied, Come back in three days for my answer. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam discussed the matter with the older men who had counseled his father Solomon. What is your advice? he asked. How should I answer these people? The older counselors replied, If you are good to these people and do your best to please them and give them a favorable answer, they will always be your loyal subjects. But Rehoboam rejected the advice of the older men and instead asked the opinion of the young men who had grown up with him and were now his advisors. What is your advice? he asked them. How should I answer these people who want me to lighten the burdens imposed by my father? The young men replied, This is what you should tell those complainers who want a lighter burden. My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. Yes, my father laid heavy burdens on you, but I'm going to make them even heavier. My father beat you with whips, but I will beat you with scorpions. Three days later, Jeroboam and all the people returned to hear Rehoboam's decision, just as the king had ordered. But Rehoboam spoke harshly to them, for he rejected the advice of the older counselors and followed the counsel of his younger advisors. He told the people, My father laid heavy burdens on you, but I'm going to make them even heavier. My father beat you with whips, but I will beat you with scorpions. So the king paid no attention to the people. This turn of events was the will of God, for it fulfilled the Lord's message to Jeroboam son of Nebat through the prophet Ahijah from Shiloh. When all Israel realized that the king had refused to listen to them, they responded, Down with the dynasty of David! We have no interest in the son of Jesse! Back to your homes, O Israel! Look out for your own house, O David! So all the people of Israel returned home. But Rehoboam continued to rule over the Israelites who lived in the towns of Judah. King Rehoboam sent Adoniram, who was in charge of the labor force, to restore order. But the people of Israel stoned him to death. When this news reached King Rehoboam, he quickly jumped into his chariot and fled to Jerusalem. And to this day, the northern tribes of Israel have refused to be ruled by a descendant of David. From 1 Kings, Shimea's Prophecy When Rehoboam arrived at Jerusalem, he mobilized the men of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, 180,000 select troops, to fight against the men of Israel and to restore the kingdom to himself. But God said to Shimea, the man of God, Say to Rehoboam, son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all the people of Judah and Benjamin, and to the rest of the people, This is what the Lord says. Do not fight against your relatives, the Israelites. Go back home, for what has happened is my doing. So they obeyed the message of the Lord and went home as the Lord had commanded. From Second Chronicles, Shimea's Prophecy
When Rehoboam arrived at Jerusalem, he mobilized the men of Judah and Benjamin, 180,000 select troops, to fight against Israel and to restore the kingdom to himself. But the Lord said to Shimea, the man of God, Say to Rehoboam, son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all the Israelites in Judah and Benjamin, This is what the Lord says. Do not fight against your relatives. Go back home, for what has happened is my doing. So they obeyed the message of the Lord and did not fight against Jeroboam. From 1 Kings, Jeroboam makes gold calves. Jeroboam then built up the city of Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim, and it became his capital. Later he went and built up the town of Peniel. Jeroboam thought to himself, Unless I am careful, the kingdom will return to the dynasty of David. When these people go to Jerusalem to offer sacrifices at the temple of the Lord, they will again give their allegiance to King Rehoboam of Judah. They will kill me and make him their king instead. So on the advice of his counselors, the king made two gold calves. He said to the people, It is too much trouble for you to worship in Jerusalem. Look, Israel, these are the gods who brought you out of Egypt. He placed these calf idols in Bethel and in Dan at either end of his kingdom. But this became a great sin, for the people worshipped the idols, traveling as far north as Dan to worship the one there. Jeroboam also erected buildings at the pagan shrines and ordained priests from the common people, those who were not from the priestly tribe of Levi. And Jeroboam instituted a religious festival in Bethel held on the fifteenth day of the eighth month, in imitation of the annual festival of shelters in Judah. There at Bethel he himself offered sacrifices to the calves he had made, and he appointed priests for the pagan shrines he had made. So on the fifteenth day of the eighth month, a day that he himself had designated, Jeroboam offered sacrifices on the altar at Bethel. He instituted a religious festival for Israel, and he went up to the altar to burn incense. From Second Chronicles Rehoboam fortifies Judah. Rehoboam remained in Jerusalem and fortified various towns for the defense of Judah. He built up Bethlehem, Etam, Tekoa, Bethzur, Soko, Adullam, Gath, Marisha, Ziph, Adoraim, Lachish, Azekah, Zora, Aijalon, and Hebron. These became the fortified towns of Judah and Benjamin. Rehoboam strengthened their defenses and stationed commanders in them, and he stored supplies of food, olive oil, and wine. He also put shields and spears in these towns as a further safety measure. So only Judah and Benjamin remained under his control. But all the priests and Levites living among the northern tribes of Israel sided with Rehoboam. The Levites even abandoned their pasture lands and property and moved to Judah and Jerusalem, because Jeroboam and his sons would not allow them to serve the Lord as priests. Jeroboam appointed his own priests to serve at the pagan shrines, where they worshipped the goat and calf idols he had made. From all the tribes of Israel, those who sincerely wanted to worship the Lord, the God of Israel, followed the Levites to Jerusalem, where they could offer sacrifices to the Lord, the God of their ancestors. This strengthened the kingdom of Judah, and for three years they supported Rehoboam, son of Solomon. For during those years they faithfully followed in the footsteps of David and Solomon.